Um, so the work that we was talking about today was done in collaboration with Chris uh, and <coughs> So there are the space on this paper, which appeared in May. <coughs> so I hope that the uh, discussion yesterday will be useful to follow some of the discussion today. Um, probably this plan is a little bit uh, ambitious, so maybe we will not cover exactly everything, but I will try to uh, give more attention to the topic which I already discussed yesterday. And we will uh, only cross over some, something which I have not actually discussed The first part is going to be a little bit more uh, light and in general, uh, and the second part, the final part, be more technical, but that's probably the part that you can do the most good. So here is some background and motivations. Um, so as I, as I explained yesterday, since the formulation of the ASAP correspondence, uh, there has been a motivation to look for a multi-decipher solution, in particular in the presence of some symmetry, as a way to explore the quantum theory in one dimension less. Uh, and uh, perhaps in the, in the first 20 years of the SDFT, uh, attention has been devoted more to dimension higher than two, because not only the theory of seeing four and three dimensions, for example, even higher dimensions than five or six uh, were much less understood than the theory of two dimensions. Uh, however, well, uh, it has been emerged that actually CFP in two dimensions are perhaps richer than um, what you expect, what you expect. And so there is a, a little bit of a revised interest to study uh, using two dimensions in the relation to uh, a two solutions. One of the motivations actually to the, look at a three or a three even one to come less. <coughs> Is that they arise at near large limits of certain uh, black holes, specific black holes in four to five dimensions. And then there is an idea that perhaps one can study the, uh, the associated view of the of one dimension um, as a way to count the microstates of the associated black holes. Uh, and maybe make progress by using ideas such as those discussed about uh, states in quantum mechanics, for example. This can be obtained in various ways, one way with the technique, but also there is a, an approach which is that of a new synchronization which allows to compute certain condition uh, functions and, and systems. So, Today, the focus is going to be about ADS3, and uh, holography for ADS3 may be interesting for uh, various reasons. Uh, so, application for the matter, for example, um, understanding quantum uh, gravity, uh, operation of high spin, and possible connection to the other things. Another uh, uh, reason for being interested in two dimensional field theories is that, as I mentioned, perhaps the, the structure of Basically, the solution of this uh, theories is, um, is wider and there are more exotic things out there to be understood. And one new tool which emerged in the last few years is uh, um, the idea of C-extimization, which is a, a generalization to two dimensions of uh, um, what was put forward about 10 years ago or more uh, by Julius and Bact, which is the A-extimization for using central charges in four dimensions. Uh, so the way to construct these um, theories is uh, one of the last things I said yesterday by engineering them from uh, brains, uh, perhaps wrapping some cycle in some uh, in some. So as I emphasized yesterday, if you're interested in studying holography uh, in the context of uh, string platform theory. Then we really are after uh, solutions of type to be type two, in general, uh, type two 
that way, or eleven dimensional stratigraphic disk. And this is what is referred to as top down approach, where we really start from something uh, in the higher dimension and we work our way to the lower dimensions instead of writing some uh, total model uh, with some by the after uh, so this has motivated the research program of scanning through systematic solutions uh, with a media factor in several in all possible dimensions to uh, the site. So <clears throat> this is a representative uh, list of uh, references um, for the use of uh, chronological order. Um, so uh, some earlier ones were uh, maybe five solutions were uh, classified in papers with my collaborators. And then one reference which is relevant to the discussion today is a paper by Kim, where he looked at ABS3 solutions and that to be uh, preserving 0 0.2 supersymmetry from the in future. And there are also uh, more recent uh, studies which, for example, uh, involve ABS7 and ABS6 solutions, which I briefly mentioned yesterday. And so there are also other uh, partial Applications with imposing various fractions of symmetry. So I think this is a program which is a lot has been done, but it's still worth uh, finishing it some, somehow and uh, explore all the possible aliases and all the possible fractions of symmetry that can be observed in, in the values of symmetry. So, uh, well, important variability is, and somehow uh, explain the generalized this. Uh, Understand how hard solutions uh, with this three factor look like in particular sense. So, one of the motivating ideas for this work was uh, to try to uh, include in, in the analysis also the slightly more exotic brains, which are the seven brains. So, um, these are more exotic because they have higher dimensions. Um, they, um, they come with singularities, so they, as I explained, uh, the couple to the axon. Uh, so, in general, you can say the couple to this uh, axon, the axon, the is complex by the field. And uh, they are more exotic because they, they come with singularities, uh, they are monotonous uh, as we go around them. Uh, and this is not unexpected uh, because seven brains in one plus nine dimensions, they are like strings. Things like objects in one of the three dimensions. So uh, they, they somehow uh, are quite good in infinity, quite space, they're not uh, uh, like objects. So there is this sort of block behavior as one goes uh, uh, near to the, to the core of the system, which was pointed out by the So uh, although they are there, they're present in the type to be. Language, but often uh, either they are not included in the, in the classification of the solution, or uh, one uh, includes them in the beginning and then set this tau to constant, as I was, for example, assuming yesterday in my discussion, uh, to simplify things uh, and, and to find uh, the explicit solutions uh, or to understand the view On the other hand, uh, for a sort of different type of community in our, in our field, uh, uh, people are really like to have these uh, seven grades and non trivial uh, out. And this, uh, this is the community of all the F theory. So uh, traditionally, this F theory uh, idea has been used as a way to, to construct uh, perhaps phenomenological models as an alternative, say, to uh, so, uh, to obtain uh, a low energy theory that somehow is on this uh, standard model of this specimen. So, this project uh, somehow came out of, a, uh, of an idea of trying to uh, see how to reconcile this difference from the view. And this is reflected also by uh, the authors of the project, people like me and the SFT. Side and people like this work on the after side. So we're trying to see whether we can incorporate in some meaningful way holography in after or the other way around. 
So <coughs> I'm going to spend some some slides to sort of go through the, the various features of what we expect from and what we expect from that theory, and then we see whether we can make sense of things together. So in holography, typically, at least traditionally, let's say, uh, one has a solution of a say, ten dimensional uh, gravity, which comprises uh, an ABS factor in some dimension. Uh, and then uh, an internal part, um, which is a, normally the smooth complement. So on the end of the end here, you can note some uh, perhaps complicated internal manifold. Uh, and the magic, which is uh, taken in 10 or 11 dimensions, has to have this uh, form here. So that's the most general metric that one can have that preserves the symmetries of ADS. Uh, so so one can include also a work factor, so it's a scalar function that depends on the internal manifold. Uh, right. And then one can turn on all the various fluxes, again, in a way which is compatible with preserving this uh, as to the um, Normally, as, as I said, uh, tau is taken to be constant to avoid the problems with singularities. On the other hand, in F theory, uh, people, uh, the typical setup that is considered is for a uh, 10 dimensional um, metric, uh, which, is, uh, which contains, say, the Minkowski factor, the, 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 the space where the theory, the theory is supposed to live, and uh, some uh, internal uh, factor, and then non trivial tau. And then the whole thing is the metric, which I mentioned, and the tau are assembled together in, in a sort of auxiliary 12 dimensional metric, so which lives in an auxiliary 12 dimensional space, although there is no really supergravity in 12 dimensions, so uh, this is an auxiliary construct, but uh, it allows to make all the progress by using um, tools such as that of uh, uh, algebraic geometry as, uh, as physics. Uh, we're not supposed to learn, but some, some people are not smart enough to uh, understand that. So, uh, this is the, the, uh, and the, the metric that, uh, say, the four dimensional part, or well, this can be, say, four dimensional or six dimensional, plus the two dimensions, the actually two dimensions, uh, you know, the x and y, and tau one and tau two uh, uh, are the real dimensional part of, of tau. So, uh, this tau becomes then like a complex structure which varies in the space, base, right? varies in the in the base, and uh, the whole thing uh, normally is taken to be a uh, cardinal. So the, the full, uh, say, six dimensional space uh, is taken to be a cardinal, and because of this uh, form, there are special cardinals that call the elliptic finder cardinal or more short. And this is a pictorial view, so there is this space with this uh, axillary torus uh, with coordinates x and y, which varies on it, uh, with various similarities where various cycles of the torus shrink. So, again, so here is the idea of how to reconcile these two points of view. Uh, as I said, here, people work in holography that uh, normally prefers to work with smooth spaces. Um, and even better, um, if there are some explicit metrics, um, so that one is able to compute by its properties, uh, have the isometries, can check the isometries, and therefore can match the symmetries of the inputs, and so on. And if we're interested in, uh, in supersymmetry, then we also uh, <coughs> like to check in streams explicitly. Uh, we can refer various information from it, for example. Uh, the number of spinning spinners then reflects in the number of also, charges in field theory, uh, and the, the zone that we use, for example, the Darcy and so on. On the other hand, the people working in F theory, they are perfectly fine with singularities, and uh, they, they don't need explicit metrics, and in fact, uh, uh, sort of uh, have some adversity about the fact that there is a metric, and uh, everything is done uh, more abstractly somehow. Uh, Perhaps in terms of the uh, algebraic geometric description of, of these calabrias. 
So here we are trying to uh, sort of strike a deal between these two different communities. And uh, uh, well, I think the idea is very broad and, and quite interesting to explore. And um, here in this work, we are given the start by, by looking at some uh, specific uh, setup where I will be described, which uh, eventually gives rise to uh, some previous But um, by no means, this is the only case that can be looked at, and I will mention some other possible organizations. The, uh, the holographic could probably go on the dial. <laughs> Sorry? No, no, please uh, I said the holography could probably go on a diet, it's looking a bit chuck. You know. What about that? Why? Why oh, it's a bit, bit overweight, maybe? <laughs> well, let's see what happens. <laughs> um, if you are interested in these things, you can look at also the slides of us who write strings where there are some different features with some other features. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so this is the, the hope. Um, I'm not sure this was the right place to put this slide, but I think it was at the end, yeah. Um, okay, so now I'm going to uh, go a little bit backwards. Um, I'm not going to talk about that theory for, for a while. Um, I'm going to uh, switch uh, to, the, um, to the sort of uh, Graphic part, and I want to go through some examples of ADS3 because certainly uh, this is not going to be the first case that ADS3 has been studied <coughs> in the context of holography. Uh, uh, so I want to, uh, want to discuss a few examples which are well understood. Uh, so <coughs> perhaps the most famous example is the is this solution here in fact to be. So you have uh, 10 dimensions, and then you get them. From ADS3 plus C3 plus T4, or you can replace T4 also with K2. So <clears throat> this appeared already in the first paper by Mother Senna, and uh, it's more or less the statement in the paper is that uh, if one considers multiple uh, if one, if one in five brains in that to be, then you obtain the linear horizon uh, this solution. So we can uh, explain this idea of linear horizon yesterday. And this is dual. Uh, in the sense of holography to one plus one dimensional supercomponent theory with uh, four comma four. So in two dimensions, uh, the supersymmetries are always indicated with the two, two varieties. You can have different uh, branches and different varieties describing the each branch of this of this uh, system. Uh, so one can consider a number of the one grains, the number of the one, the number of the five grains, the number of the five, and then the D ones are as the speech suggests within the D five grains. And, uh, and you can think of the resulting intersection here on, on top of the one and five as some kind of effect in the one. So although the D1 alone wouldn't give rise to an ADS3, so the theory of the D1 is not a formal, so you don't get an ADS3. But if you also uh, consider the D5 together, then <clears throat> by an exercise similar to the one I did yesterday for the free brain, you can you can get from the from the brain solution. Brain intersection solution, and then you have a rise and you really get ADS3 system. So this preserves focal for supersymmetry, and uh, the solution also displays an S2 uh, isometry within the S4 that rotates the S3, and this is interpreted uh, as a so called small superconformal algebra. So the superconformal algebra for uh, 0,4 uh, theories. Uh, that become in various uh, types uh, and are characterized by, by the R symmetry, how, how this R symmetry uh, acts uh, on, the, on the supercharges. Uh, and if you have SU2, this is called uh, small, uh, and this is the case of, of this situation. Um, in fact, the central charges, the structure of the central charge depends also whether <coughs> the superconductor algebra is small or large, um, and in the case of large, we appear in the next slide. So one can compute the holographic central charge by doing something along the lines of what I was discussing yesterday for four dimensions. Uh, in, actually, in three dimensions, uh, two dimensions in the boundary, uh, this goes back to Brown and Hanon, so perhaps predates a little bit uh, the, the papers by Hamilton and Sandaris, where the expression for the central charge in any dimension was right. 
Um, and, and one gets the perfect agreement on the two sides. So we move on. Uh, there's another typical system which has been studied uh, uh, for the years uh, with different contributions. Perhaps this goes back to this paper here, where this solution is first obtained as a the horizon of a bar spring intersection. Again, it contains D1 and D5, but the setup is slightly more complicated. You have this D5 which also intersect the uh, terminal in addition to the D1s, which are uh, along the common intersection of these two sets of D5s. So you have three integers, Q1, Q5, and Q5 prime. And this again is a 4,4, but in this case, essentially because there are two S3s, each of the two S3s count with an SO4, and within the SO4, there is an SU2. So you have two factors of SU2, SU2R and SU2R prime, and this uh, is a uh, uh, property of a large supernova. So in this case, actually, this is the form of the central charge that one needs to uh, that is dictated by, by the algebra. And um, so the, the duality in this case was understood much later in time, uh, and there was a proposal by uh, Linton uh, three years ago that um, gave a model that, that matches match the, so the, the charge that one can compute from, from this solution. Okay, so I hope I've convinced you that uh, for many years, uh, ADS2 solutions have been associated with the system of D1 and D5, which was the, the expectation, uh, and in particular the D1 is what you expect to be an ingredient in this. Um, but here we're trying to do something different. Uh, we're trying to see whether we can get um, ADS3, uh, and therefore two dimensional theories, from different brains. And this then we can do, uh, we can try, try to do, by using this idea of wrapping some brains in some non-digital science. So when we focus on um, taking the three brains, one can also actually consider, for example, and five brains, an end theory, and wrap them in some four dimensional cycle. But here we will consider the three brains wrapped in some uh, two dimensional cycle. Um, so, uh, first of all, I will consider the situation which has been studied uh, essentially by King, and then I will move on uh, in, in the work we studied, where we use in addition the presence of these other brains. So, you can consider a space time of this form, and then wrap with N, where N is going to be large. The three brains on some uh, two cycle, uh, say a Riemann surface, within this uh, non compact manifold. So this gives rise to some sort of string, which are transfers to the main, and then the word boy is along this R1, And choosing this M8 uh, and sigma R perfectly, one can uh, uh, preserve different fractions of supersymmetry. So um, there is, in general, then, uh, two D supersymmetry. Theory of strings, if you preserve supersymmetry, um, which you can think uh, also as coming from uh, the theory of the three brain, that's a four dimensional theory, and you can back up that theory down into on the underlying surface. For example, you can start from any of the and meals, and then compact up that on the surface and obtain two dimensional theory. Now, the question is uh, whether you would get a two dimensional theory, which is also conformal in, in, in the low energy. Um, that's not a very simple question. I don't think there are very uh, powerful tools to uh, analyze that a priori in the future. So it requires a bit of a guesswork, I guess. And um, however, from the point of view of the, of the holography, uh, there, is a, uh, there is an easy test. And, and the test is that if there is a background that comprises ADS3, you can think of it as coming from this configuration, then the answer uh, to this question is that yes, there is. Uh, so, if you go to this logic, then you can uh, put that away uh, and then say, okay, I expect to have some, uh, some ADS3 solutions, you have some two dimensional theories. So, I'm going to attack that head on. Uh, I'm going to forget about this uh, picture, where it comes from, and I'm going to uh, attempt to uh, classify and analyze the supersymmetry condition system. So, this is what the message I was trying to give you yesterday. And this is <coughs> what um, this paper of King, Michael King, uh, has done already in more than 10 years. Uh, what time did we start? Just uh, seven minutes. Okay.
So I'm about to help, help with that. <clears throat> All right, so here is some uh, bit of super gravity analysis by using this technique about the uh, G structure, which I explained uh, yesterday. So you start with an input, and here you summarize the input. The input has the answers from the matrix, which is the most general one, we have the symmetries of the uh, uh, history, and uh, an answer for the fluxes. So this is the most general answers for the five form flux, which you definitely need if you want to include the three brains. And uh, as, I, as I did yesterday, actually, uh, um, King made a simplifying assumption that there are no other fluxes than one. Right? So, in a way, this is the analog for ADS3 of what I discussed yesterday for ADS5. So, we have got only the, um, the metric and the 5 form flux, um, which is two, three, 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 couple, and no other, no other result. And then you have to take this uh, super simple equation that we were in this board yesterday, plug in these, these two things, and, and you can reduce them to this single equation. So this is the analog of what they wrote uh, over there. Um, that was the killing spin on the tape rise in the society. Right. So uh, the job here is uh, to analyze the consequences of this equation here, uh, where you have a uh, Spinner and, and then the five from plus anchors uh, to this, this term and no other other terms of uh, Well, okay, so one start computing. Uh, one can introduce uh, various uh, bilinears, various forms, uh, and then rephrase uh, the result in some dramatic uh, fashion. So there is some output uh, of this analysis, um, and then sort of fast forward, um, one finds that the seven dimensional. Manifold here, what was to be determined, takes this form, at least locally, where uh, there is a there is a six dimensional part. We can refer to this as to the base, in the sense that locally this looks like a vibration, you want vibration over this space. And this space uh, has a nice property of being K by manifold. Well, I shouldn't say manifold, it can be a manifold, but it doesn't have to be a global defined. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to go into these technicalities here. So uh, you can think of it as a K manifold uh, with a K level 2 form uh, that you want to construct naturally from the spinners, as, as discussed yesterday. And uh, this rod here appears in the vibration. Uh, its curvature is given by uh, the rigid form of the, of the, of the K level space. So although this looks uh, tantalizingly similar to the Sasaki Einstein manifolds, you might think this is actually uh, just up to the work factor is the same as the second manifold. It is not, because the vibration here uh, is, is different. And for those of you who were very uh, attentive yesterday, you, you would remember that the, the term that here in vibration uh, was different. So D of, of this term yesterday was given by J, whereas here is given by this which is In any case, this takes this form. And uh, the fact that there is this killing factor that one can obtain in a very similar fashion to yesterday um, denotes uh, the fact that there is a U1 isometry, which actually can be interpreted as an R symmetry in the field theory duo, uh, which one always expects if it imposes uh, um, the fact that this, the dual supersymmetry must be at least zero point two. Right? So this U1 rotates these, uh, these two supercharges. You can also have in principle 0, 0,1, uh, but that's very weak. Um, and so uh, this analysis is required from the start to get with 0, 0,2. So uh, one could repeat this for 0, 0,1, but you wouldn't get anything very far from that. You get an expression for the flux, uh, which uh, is given in terms of the rest of the data. So uh, the 5 from flux through, the, through, through this equation here is completely fixed. You don't have to determine. Essentially, once you, you give the Kähler manifold, uh, you are almost done. It's in the second why not completely done. Uh, because you can obtain the rest of the geometry uh, by explicit expressions such as this one, uh, which gives that expression. Okay. Why we are not we are not really done? And the reason is that there is a very material constraint, a very material equation um, that the Kähler metric on M6 has to obey. So here, R6 denotes the richest scalar. The box is the, is the Laplacian. 
and uh, are you know, with the, the rich uh, answer. So you have this non trivial equation to be satisfied. And you can't just take any any old K manifold with, uh, with your favorite magic. So uh, that, that, that makes actually the problem uh, non trivial. And uh, well, it is, it is expected that there is something that you can do. It's not expected that you can take any K manifold and insert it and, and get uh, lots of solutions. So essentially, the only non trivial equation to solve at the end of the day is this one. And to solve this one, uh, there are no reasonable technology you have to, as far as I know, you have to just to try sometimes. <coughs> okay, but this is as much progress one could do by, by exploiting this idea of what, what, what is R6 squared? What's the difference between that and the last time? R6 is the square of the richest scale. Which is different from the last time? Yes. And it's like so. It's the U1, U1 um, vibrations. It, um, does it carry charge? I mean, if you integrate its curvature over two cycles in M6, do you always um, get something non-zero? And if, so, what is that? You know. Yeah. Getting? Yeah. For example, in order to uh, to ensure that uh, the, the seven-dimensional manifold is, is is a globally defined manifold and, and it's so uh, well defined, the vibration is a uh, well defined vibration. You have to take uh, the Turing class of the operation, so we can do by this, yeah. and that integrate over various two cycles on the base. And does that what does that mean in terms of the R symmetry of the CFT? I mean, uh, it doesn't mean anything in terms of the R symmetry. The R symmetry is a, is a constant, is a, is a local constant here. Um, okay. I mean, if you can promote this to a, to a global operation, uh, then it means that the R symmetry uh, is a is a is a U1 as opposed to an R, it's like a compact. Uh, and it, it would mean, in, in those cases, it would mean that the R charges that uh, one can, well, okay, so I take back. <laughs> it means something. In, in this particular case, it's in, uh, it implies that R charges are um, uh, integer or expression. Uh, whereas if, if, if you can't do that, and yet uh, it's still possible to make sense of these geometries. Um, but you might have situations in which, the, uh, in which this is not a, a proper situation. <coughs> yeah. It's only locally defined, yeah. and that could be, lead to the fact that our charges uh, are not uh, integer yeah. Yeah. for rational. Now, although I'm not quite aware of the general result, in all the examples, by which the, actually there are several so far, in all the examples, the R charges turn out to be rational. So it's a feature which is worth perhaps uh, understanding better the, the reason for that. Uh, it, it sort of it matches with the expectation from the field, which I'm going to say something about that. So if it's not rational, then like it flows to it doesn't flow to anything non-trivial basically. Say so, so. if you if if you had the situation where the R charges weren't rational, and presumably the RG flow would be trivial in the infrarreds or something like that. Uh, in four dimensions, this is a situation that certainly arises. Yeah. And it's non trivial, it's non trivial fixed points. There are non trivial computers in four dimensions which have a rational argument. In, in two dimensions, actually, the expectation, because of this line, more or less, is that, that they're going to be rational. Um, mm, okay. But, okay, I don't know if this is really, this is just a theory. So let me say something about uh, the with expectations. So uh, these two gentlemen here have constructed uh, several examples of, of, the, of the solutions. I can, this is not the way they phrased it in the, in the results, the papers, but they have constructed several examples uh, of solutions to these equations. And uh, the way they've done it is, is a bit, uh, well, they use a different approach uh, that is more related to the to the idea of what I was discussing yesterday of, of doing some consistent consistent plantation and working with some case to gravity in, in the lower dimension. Right? And it exploits the fact that uh, they like to think about these two-dimensional theories really as coming from N equal to four uh, wrapped on a real surface on a certain clavial, uh, where for example uh, the clavial, this is one example of the clavial, 
uh, is the sum of line bundles. We run that sum of three bundles for the green service that takes up that route. Some requirement on the uh, on the on the various uh, classes of these uh, bundles to make this uh, Now, from the field theory point of view, uh, one is doing um, twisting, so that means that it's replacing one is replacing the, the normal uh, covariant derivative here, uh, which comprises only these first two terms, and as here you notice the screen of the field on which this is acting, by twisting uh, by this uh, sort of uh, background gauge field, A mu, uh, where A mu uh, is a background uh, sort of R symmetry gauge field, and as such, uh, it has to be um, a linear combination of the, of the various uh, possible flavor uh, uh, symmetries of the field. So this is exactly analogous to the, to the situation in 4D uh, in this notation. So here, for example, uh, because you start from the Four, you have an SO6 asymmetry, uh, and therefore uh, you, can, you can have a, this U1 in the two dimensional theory can, can mix in any of the cartons of the SO6. So there's U1 cube for two possible, possible asymmetries. And then you can parameter this by uh, combination with A1, 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 to determine the central charges, in particular to determine the uh, CR, the right wing central charge, uh, of a two-dimensional supercosmological theory, which has that zero comma two supersymmetry. And that's related uh, to, the, to the idea of um, the anomalies, again, like for A maximization. So there are two types of uh, anomalies uh, in two dimensions, or two dimensional uh, SCFTs. One is the um, anomaly of the R symmetry, which is uh, given by the left hand side proportional to the background, uh, the fixed type of the background uh, gauge field, times this uh, coefficient AR. And then there's also a non-conservation of the energy momentum tensor, which is proportional to the difference of CR times CL, uh, is uh, right and left charges. Uh, now, if you determine KR, then you can determine uh, CR by this simple formula. And uh, there is then a requirement uh, about the dimension of sort of mixed uh, anomalies of the U1R with all the possible flavor anomaly, other anomalies, which can be rephrased in terms of an uh, externalization problem. So you can give it like a file uh, symmetry uh, and that uh, it's files in the uh, combination of the one and flavors. And then if you, uh, if you use this condition here, it has to be through the theory uh, just from uh, other considerations, then uh, you can rephrase the problem as having to uh, externalize this function here of the file asymmetries. And at the end of the day, if you do this in this particular setting, one can obtain uh, uh, the right, right moving of the charge, which actually at the order, as I was actually explaining yesterday, is the same uh, as the left moving of the charge, as, uh, and it's proportional to n squared, as in four dimensions. So one of the expression of that. Uh, and actually, let me just uh, uh, accelerate. Um, this can be checked to be uh, exactly reproduced by, by the solutions here that can be constructed with the ADST. So there are also other generalizations. For example, there are solutions where one replaces uh, the internal manifold with some sort of uh, manifold which resembles the white 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 Q manifold, which we found uh, three years ago. Uh, and then uh, the resulting theories can be talked again as coming from equilibrium uh, of the theory and reduce the linear surface. So there are various checks that one can do, and there are, as I said, many examples that have been uh, Now let me move on to the last uh, part of the talk to, to the uh, material that we uh, did in the paper. So uh, I can summarize sort of the, the results of the paper by saying that we uh, wanted to characterize the semantic phase distribution in the quantum lab theory, uh, therefore can centralize the work of Kim. And then we also wanted, and we did uh, to some extent, find some uh, new solutions, uh, like explicit examples, uh, and uh, understand those solutions in terms of people that are going to be by generalizing this work. So, uh, okay, so that we 
work, uh, the preliminary work is similar to the one in King, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, what we did, we included uh, an arbitrary uh, function, complex function tau, the Lux and Dilla thing. <laughs> and uh, in the paper, actually, we set the flux, the free form flux to zero, although it's possible to include it, and we are sort of working, uh, working on that uh, at the moment. Uh, but in this paper, we set the uh, flux to zero, and only to tau. But this is enough in order to, uh, to be able already to think about that. So tau is the main thing. Right? Uh, and in fact, it's the only it's the only field that you still can consider you have to applications, although sometimes uh, some other plants are so So uh, okay, we put that as an input and uh, the output is quite similar to the one in King, uh, but it's slightly different. And actually it turns out uh, we can use this F to right sort of uh, uh, inspired uh, absolute metric, which is eight dimensional, and uh, it is constructed by taking the scalar base, which still exists in this context. So there is an M6, which has to be a scalar, um, and then uh, we, if we put this uh, vibration, the absolute torus, turns out that the full metric here uh, it doesn't have to be Calabial, it's not Calabial, as in Constructions. But it actually obeys the same equation as before, uh, I showed before, but now in, in two dimensions higher. So there is this no trivial equation to be satisfied. So if you, are, uh, if you really want to find a uh, general solution, then you are reduced to find a solution to the equation here. Yeah. And then all the rest will be uh, in the uh, return. So uh, again, this is something we are still working on. Uh, we have some examples of this solution of this equation here, some solutions that solve that. But here, in the paper, we decided to, uh, to focus on a particular case, and this is something one can always do, so you can require that there is some higher supersymmetry, higher fraction of supersymmetry preserved. Um, and well, there are various options, for example, one can uh, consider 2,2, one option with full supercharges. Uh, again, we are working on that. Um, but in the paper, we consider the case uh, 0, 0,4, uh, and that's what, uh, what I'm going to discuss uh, what follows. So uh, it turns out that 0, 0,4 uh, it is slightly borderline boring, but not complete. So it, the, 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 the solution is almost uniquely defined, but almost, almost uniquely uh, fixed. So let, let's see how it's fixed. It is fixed, first of all, the work factor becomes constant. And, and then the eight dimensional space takes this uh, dark product, so there is a ground S2 times a uh, uh, six dimensional manifold, uh, uh, Y, which actually has to be an elliptic Calabial. So the Calabial reappears somehow. The eight dimensional, the full eight dimensional object is not Calabial, but it's sort of, well, close to this one. It's the Calabial freefall times uh, an S2. So if you plug this back into the, to the metric, then uh, the physical metric, the, the, the metric in, in type 3, the 10 dimensional one, takes this form here. So we have ADS3, uh, we'll put it by, by, as a requirement. Uh, and then this one vibration that was uh, we were discussing earlier actually fibers only on the S2, doesn't fiber on the Y. So uh, you, get a, um, you get an S3, just the whole vibration. And then there is the elliptic vibration. But it, that still remains, and on the contrary, this is now fiber only over, over one. So this is not, this is not fiber over uh, S2, of course. So uh, um, the whole thing here, which is a radial uh, triple, actually uh, is a little vibration over the other base. So this B4 here is a little bit However, uh, I should stress that again, one is not free to pick any Taylor metric. Uh, so although actually the possible bases are all classified by uh, FQA people and, and uh, mathematicians, friend of them, um, but uh, they don't say what is the metric. They don't give, they don't give us the metric. So we actually uh, didn't find explicit metrics, but we work our way around that. So it was B for compact or no? Yeah, it is, yeah, it is compact, but uh, in type to B, it turns out um, 
that uh, the metric that is used from the lead vibration to receive it. So uh, I'm not completely confident. The, the metric on B4 is, is singular. Sorry? The, me the metric on B4 is singular. It is singular. I mean, the best way I, I, uh, that this can be made really precise is when you go to M theory. Uh, there I can actually uh, resolve the singular. Yeah. 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 But then there is no anymore. I mean, basically, if you go to M, I will not have time to talk about that. But we can do it. If you go to M theory, uh, then this form of the metric doesn't hold anymore. So you, have, you can resolve it, but you have to give up the sort of uh, naive. Uh, Hypothesis. Uh, but in any case, thinking about this before uh, as, a, as a limit of something which is nicely defined and smooth, that uh, helps in the computations, even in the metric that is being used in that thing is similar. So, uh, fine, well, okay, we can do various uh, uh, analysis, various comments, we can find the specific isometries, which are going to be, of course, in this process 3. Uh, and this we don't have an example, so we can in general. Uh, and by analyzing the killing spinners uh, explicitly, we find that again we have a small field of So there is only an SU2 part that acts as a spinner, and the other as a factor of SU2, SU2, let's say L of left. Um, uh, it is an isometry, but it does not act on the spinners, and therefore it doesn't correspond to an SU2. Okay, we can also make a quotient, but let me not spend any time on that because. Uh, well, okay, it's just perfect. So if we can actually make a quotient uh, by considering uh, uh, the M uh, quotient within the S2 L, and because the spinners are not charged under this S2, that is preserved the same amount of supersymmetry. So this introduces an extra parameter, which is an integer, uh, and it's an uh, ideal integer M. So the full solution uh, now depends also on M. Uh, okay, so uh, we can now compute various things. Um, the main focus has been in the paper of computing the most basic things, and as I explained yesterday, the most basic things are the central charges, which we can compute holographically, and then by uh, much more uh, sort of, uh, 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 sophisticated effort, we can also determine that. And the future. So I don't probably want to much time to talk about the field computation, but let me uh, illustrate the, the holographic computation, which comes with a, a couple of sub Relates to the fact that we are working with these half of numbers. So we can conclude this by uh, um, using the same uh, Brown Renault uh, formula. Right. The Brown Renault formula uh, includes uh, very similar to the formula I wrote yesterday for the four dimensional case uh, the radius of ADS, the different power from yesterday, and the G Newton in three dimensions. Yesterday we had G Newton in five dimensions. So to determine G Newton in two dimensions, actually, uh, as yesterday, uh, this turns out to be proportional to the different power from yesterday uh, to the volume of the internal manifold. So the volume of the internal manifold, uh, you can see now here appears in the numerator, actually uh, exactly as expected, so there is no funny business in going to the denominator. Uh, so, uh, from the class quantization, we have these extra factors, and at the end of the day, uh, when the dust settles, we, we have, we have a, a factor of n squared from um, the three brains, and then we also have this factor of band, which we get in, we try to make some comment at the time at the very end. Um, and most importantly, it's going to be proportional to the volume of, the, of this manifold, of this scalar manifold. So, this is it. As expected, uh, but now we have to face well, two related problems. First of all, we don't know the metric on, on this big four because no one gave us an, uh, this metric explicitly, and if you try to find it, uh, uh, it's very, very hard. So we have not very, so tried a little bit, but not very hard. Um, so this is an open question. Uh, but then there are general results which you can take from the mathematics literature. Will really tell us that whatever this metric is, it has singularities. It's going to have singularities. So this is locked up. So near to the, to the core, near to the points where these are ingrained are, it will be singularities. Okay, so how do we, what do we do? Uh, okay, so we want to try and make, uh, make sense of this volume, right? Uh, compute it in some way. So this is what we said. 
So, okay, so here is the picture of the student foot now. So the question is, is there a deal for actually, well, let's go home and just continue doing our own business. <laughs> and maybe just meet for a beer. <laughs> right. But, okay, so we still, okay, we want to try and make sense, and the fact that there is a paper suggests that actually we managed to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, there is a very simple observation. Okay, one can write the volume in terms of the, this power, the second power of the field of form, and then, um, yeah, we're calling this fact. Uh, we, can, um, we can exploit this uh, uh, relation, which was alluded earlier, of uh, resulting uh, full, the full potential. Uh, Thank you for the university. <laughs> um, right, so we can, we, we can explore this fact uh, of being able to um, to view this as a as a as a sort of physical Ramayana uh, in empty way. Uh, here we're not getting empty theory, but uh, we can still think about this Ramayana from the point of view of uh, the effect of the uh, auxiliary cloud function space. So uh, the fact that uh, C1 uh, first to class of the full integration is zero uh, implies in, uh, that actually we can just use the Yau's theorem, the manifold class to be complex, and therefore the uh, non C leverage of that matrix is, is guaranteed to exist. So okay. we're not gonna find it probably uh, as as usual for Calabian manifold. No one uh, can find this specific. Matrix, but uh, we know that it exists, uh, and we also know that it's going to be equipped with some uh, Kähler form. I don't know if it's JY, it is the Kähler form of, of the full uh, uh, manifold, which comprises two, two parts. One is a Kähler form of the base, essentially, and then there is uh, another, uh, another component, uh, which is the contrary to the section of this, of this vibration. So, um, one may also expand uh, the K4 on the base uh, on, a, on the basis of, a, of a, uh, two forms for the, uh, the what this should be after, after, after it should be homology of the space. Okay, so uh, well, this, this relation is also known to be okay and comes from general considerations from algebraic geometric considerations. Um, so one can actually rewrite <coughs> this volume uh, here in this way. So uh, you can just uh, stick in this J uh, the omega zero, which is by definition uh, can can be used to, the, to rewrite this integral as an integral of y, which the contrary to the before. So now this integral of y, the full result of the manifold, of uh, of course top form, six form, which is uh, this omega zero time. Uh, that, of course, uh, you can just write in this way, and uh, because uh, the J force uh, we assume is, well, we know actually from general results that uh, the B4 is also a Hodge manifold, that actually implies the right by this equation here. Um, so this is going to be uh, the telephone is going to be dual to some, uh, to some curve. By C, so I can switch this now uh, and go to this kind of intersection direct uh, um, notation where, um, so there's a mistake, I guess. Oh no, no, it's not that. I can write this uh, by again using the fact that J4 is the concrete dual of the curve C, so I can write this as an integral of J4 uh, uh, of C or as an intersection of uh, C, uh, C. It's an intersection. So this curve is a, is a, is a curve inside B4, two-dimensional complex uh, sub-manifold of all B4. Okay, so this is, uh, this is progress because we, we have actually uh, evaluated uh, this volume 4 and it's explicitly uh, an integer up to this factor of R. Uh, and we can, uh, we can then plug it into the formula with the central charge to obtain this expression here. Okay, so this is actually an integer, uh, 
and thus out of the things that actually could be, could be compatible with the expectation uh, of the future. Now, from the next time, um, so yeah, so we would like to compare this result and also the subleading corrections. So one interesting feature is that we can also obtain corrections at order n and also order n to the zero. So at order one, uh, that actually can be matched for the, for all of them, three of three numbers of the computation can be matched to the computation. And to think about the computer computation, the trick uh, would be, I should say, uh, because I will not discuss it, uh, to, uh, to think about the, the brains and then uh, to think about the, um, the anomaly flow of these brains uh, that can be computed quite, quite generally even without knowing the explicit details of the field. So the, the, the trick would be to relate this to some uh, anomaly computation that can be done either uh, when you want to do it in free brain by using some results of our itself or by going to uh, M theory by performing this chain of duality, which I actually sketched yesterday, so you can do it uh, one big that way. And then I think to M theory uh, is then known as M duality. And in that context, everything can be phrased in terms of M5 brains wrapped in some, uh, in some, um, in some surface there. Uh, okay, I can also. Uh, a comment about the interpretation of M, uh, which uh, this question that we have done. So uh, this M can be interpreted uh, in terms of some uh, model. So there is like a horizon geometry coming from uh, some half nut uh, magic uh, space. Um, and therefore, there is this additional factor of M, which makes the story more uh, richer, uh, but then uh, it becomes more complicated in the cycle of the uh, this result. So we have not really reproduced this dependence on M uh, from this uh, anomaly uh, computation. And that's just something that uh, I think some people are interested in and probably are looking at that. Uh, but our result concern and the future will be restricted to the special case of M equal 1, but we don't have to think about this, uh, this model. So I think I will have to skip my slides, so this is the part where we are uh, matching with the uh, Normally, it's called the brains. Uh, yeah, welcome if you see me around to ask me any questions if you want uh, later on. Uh, this is the discussion with the empty review of and so on, but let me come to the, uh, to the conclusions. So, we started to explore uh, systematically the holographic constructions in the context of F theory, uh, focusing for now in the case of ABS3 and safety 2 So, this is one paper which we published, and hopefully, there will be more papers. Uh, in the near future about other uh, various fractions of supersymmetry and running on various other classes. So this degree which is in progress. Uh, right, so for the classification uh, in fact to be one should also do the treatment class, which is the part which is more uh, tedious. Actually. So it's, it's easy enough to, to sort of consider other fractions of supersymmetry and to find some, some examples there, but including Including G, it, it's looking quite tedious as expected, but maybe it would be worthwhile exploring it as well. Um, for the 0, 0,4 case, we have obtained uh, basically a complete story, I should say, well, as, uh, as complete as we can get, where we understand uh, genetic features of these solutions and, and also we have reproduced from the microscopic computation uh, with anomalies the central charges uh, of these. Uh, Theories. And uh, unfortunately, that's not going to explain the part, but um, so it's better to go more slowly and, and make clear what we're talking about. So, uh, another thing is that we have a constructed explicit example of 0,2, <coughs> and hopefully, although it's, it's a bit uh, early days, but I, I think also we will have example of 2,2, and that would be interesting to then address uh, the two of the theories with this respective fashion. Supersymmetry, uh, and I should conclude with what is not here on the slide that uh, it may be very interesting actually to move on from ABS3 and see uh, whether we can construct, for example, ABS5 or, or other ABS6 or ABS7.
Does anybody have a very quick question? Yeah. Um, I guess it's kind of an obvious question, but have you does this work for theory backgrounds that have periodic tools? That's what I said. Does your radius three analysis work for backgrounds that have periodic tools? What we did here is not uh, does not. So is that because the, it's D three brains or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we, we assume to have a, uh, <laughs> uh, we assume to have only three brains, um, and to be um, to be in fact to be sorry, sorry. Um, and these are uh, three and uh, seven brains, more P two seven brains. So if you, yeah. I mean, so it, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, but I want to ask, is it normal that these theories have a heterotic case? Yeah, you don't have a And you can thank the And also feel free to ask Dario more questions. And then we'll close the